In this video, we're going to explore how to use the Unity Tile Map. This is the built-in Unity tool that helps you quickly and easily build worlds with tiled sprites. Let's begin. Okay, so let's check out how the tile map works. Now, I've already covered a video previously on how to build a custom tile map. So that one was built from scratch using a custom grid class. So that one is great if you want to really dig into the code and really understand how the whole thing works. But if all you want is a normal tile map, then you can just use the built-in Unity tile map. So let's see how to use it. Over here is my basic empty scene. So I have a character walking around just for fun. All right, so let's set up a tile map. Now, the first thing you need is the 2D packages. If you already created the project using the 2D template, they should already be installed. But if not, you just go into window and open up the package manager. And then here on the Unity registry, you just need to install the 2D packages. So for this one, we're going to need the 2D sprite. So this is so we can edit our sprite sheet. And then we're going to need the 2D tile map editor. So make sure both of those packages are installed. Then here we are in our nice empty scene. So on the hierarchy, just right click, go into create a new 2D object and let's make it a tile map. So right away, this creates a grid object. And if you select it, you can visually see the grid. Then over here, you have some options. So for example, you can modify the size of each grid cell. And then you can also modify the gap between each grid cell. So you can really customize exactly the type of grid that you want. So in this case, let's leave everything a nice standard grid. Then you also have the cell layout. So this means that the tile map supports both normal rectangular grids, but also hexagon and isometric grids. And then the cell swizzle, which has to do with converting coordinates. So in most cases, we'll just leave it at X, Y, Z. Okay, so that's the grid object. And then inside it, you have the actual tile map object. So over here, you have the tile map component as well as the tile map render. Again, with a bunch of options for setting the tile anchor, setting the color, setting a certain sorting order, as well as the material used to render the tile map. So you can play around with all of these, but for now, let's leave it all at default. Now, in order to start drawing our tile map, let's go into window, down here onto 2D, and let's open up the tile palette. Now, in this window is where we're going to define the palette containing all of the sprites that we're going to use in our tile map. So click on this button to create a new palette. Then give it a name, let's say our tile map palette, and let's set it to use a rectangular grid. And for the cell size, leave it as automatic. All right, so click on create. Then it's going to ask you for a folder where it will save all the sprite data. So we just make a nice new folder in order to keep it organized. So for the tile map palette, and yep, over here on the project files, we can see we created a new folder and in there we have our nice object. All right, so now here, as it says, just drag the tile sprite or texture assets in here. But before we do that, we need to first prepare our sprite sheet. So over here in the project files, I already have a nice texture. So it's a pretty simple sprite sheet with some background textures as well as some objects. So this is the same sprite sheet that I use in the complete visual scripting course that I'm currently working on. One of the games is an action RPG where I will use the tile map in order to build the world. So check the link in the description if you're interested in that course. Now, the first thing we need here is to slice the sprite sheet into its various sprites. So up here on the sprite mode, change from single into multiple. Then on the pixels per unit, make sure you select the correct size. Now here, my texture is 2048 by 2048. So each of these grids is 512 by 512. So in here, just put 512. That means that this whole thing will occupy only one unit in the world. All right, so do that and hit on apply and then click here on the sprite editor. So here's our sprite and we can click on the slice menu. And now in here, depending on how you set up your sprite sheet, if everything is nicely separated, then you can go with automatic. But in my case, that wouldn't work since I have objects of different sizes. So I'm instead going to select grid by cell size. Let's put each cell is 512 by 512 and just slice. And there we go, right away, everything is nicely sliced. So there's one here, one here, one here, and so on. Now I'm just going to fix the smaller ones. All right, so everything is good. Now just go over here and hit apply. And right away in the project files, if we expand our texture, yep, we can see that it individually created all of our sprites. So there we go, that one, that one, and so on. Everything looks good. All right, now all we need to do is take this texture object. So just click on it and drag it right here onto the tile palette. And again, make another folder. And yep, there it is. We can now see all of our individual sprites in the tile palette. Now up here, we have these buttons. So we can select, move, paint, erase, and so on. And in order to draw our tiles, the simplest one is just to click on the paint button. Then you click to select the tile, let's say this one, so click on it. 
and then just in the world just click and drag and start painting. By the way, a simple quick tip, just when you have the scene window selected, hit shift space and put it on full screen and now you got a bit more space. All right, so we can use this button in order to paint individual tiles. You can use this one in order to draw on a rectangular area and you have this one in order to erase various tiles and you can also select and then click the move and then move it around. Then as for hotkeys, for example, while you are in paint mode, there you go, select this one and now I'm painting, then select a different one and paint it. Now if I want, I can hold down shift and click and drag in order to delete and I can hold down control in order to click and select this one. So select this one, paint this one, then click control and yep, paint this one. All right, so that's the super basic tile map setup. Let me just make a basic looking map. All right, so here's my basic world. Now, one thing you might notice, depending on how you drew the sprite sheet, is some gaps. So over here, you can see a little line there and there, and especially if we zoom in, yep, there you go, there's a very big line there. So the solution to solve this is to make a sprite atlas. So right here on the project files, let's right click, go into create and create the new sprite atlas. And now here in the inspector, you can see the objects for packing. So click on the plus icon and then either select individually each sprite or select the whole texture. And then if you want, you can play around all the other settings or just leave them at default and you can click on pack preview. And now if we look in the game view, we can still see there are some gaps. So that's because the Sprite Atlas is only created when you actually run the build. So if we try to run the game, and yep, there you go, there are no more gaps and everything looks great. All right, so far so good. Now another thing you can have in a tile map is layers. So over here we see we have the grid object and then inside we have the tile map. So it's in here that you can have multiple. So rename this to the tile map background and then let's duplicate this one and name it the tile map over. Now when you do that, it also duplicates the tiles that were already in there. So for example, if I move this tile map, you can see it has the same tiles. Now I only want this one to have the objects that are going to be placed on top of the background. So just erase all these. In order to select on which tile map you are actually painting on, you have in here the drop down menu for the active tile map. So in this case, I want to erase this one on the over tile map. So just select that one. And now if I click, yep, there you go. Now I'm erasing this one. And by the way, if you select down control, then you can have a bigger brush area. So just select control, select the whole thing, and now I can erase everything with just one click. All right, so the over tile map is now empty and just reset it back on zero, zero. So everything is nicely positioned. Okay, now we want to place some things on this tile map that will show up on top of the previous one. So on each tile map, you can see the tile map renderer, and in here you have the sorting layer as well as the sorting order. So in this case, let's leave the base one on default at zero, and this one is meant to be on top, so just put it on 10. So now if I place down some objects, so let's say I want to print this little tree trunk and if there you go, it gets placed in there. So now I want to place some of these and there you go, I can place them. So we now have one tile map being painted on top of another one. However, we want this one to be in between the other tiles. So I want to place this sprite in between those two edges. Now to do that, there's essentially two approaches. So we can just move the tile map object. So just move it by 0.5 and 0.5 and there you go. Now it's offset on each corner. And another potential approach is to modify over here the tile anchor. So at 0.5, they are being anchored in the center. And if I put at 0, 0, then they're now at the bottom. Yep, just like that. So you have those two options. In this case, let's leave the anchor at that and just slightly offset the tile map object. Okay, so now I can place the sprite in between the edges, just like that. I can also place a bunch of other objects. So there you go, a couple of bushes, a couple of tree trunks, and so on. Now, another thing you can do is modify the tile palette. So over here you have a button for edit, so click on it, and now we are in edit mode. So while in edit mode, select the paintbrush, then control click on the one that we want to copy, so control click, and then let's make four of them in here. Then also control click on this one and make another one there. All right, so now with the select tool, select this one, and now rotate this one by 90 degrees, and this one by 180, and this one by 270. All right, so we have all of these rotated ones, and for this one, rotate by 90. All right, so there it is. Save the tile palette, exit edit mode, and now we have all of these nice rotated sprites. So if I want, I can now perfectly place these ones. So yep, there you go, just like that. By the way, another thing you can do is also play around with the pivot for each object. So for example, on the tree trunk, you can go into the texture, go into the sprite editor, 
Here is the tree trunk, and instead of having the pivot down the middle, let's move it down in there. And hit apply, and there you go, they all moved automatically. So you can modify the pivot of where the thing gets placed. And lastly, you also have options for scaling the tiles. So with the select tool, select each tile, and then for example, modify the scale, 2, 2, 2. And now if I try to paint this, there you go, now it paints them much bigger. So you can really play around with any object on the palette. Now with regards to scaling, for example, I have these four objects which are meant to be smaller than one grid position. So if I try to place the pillar right here, that's a bit bigger, I don't want it to be that big. So again, I can click here in order to modify the scale, put it that much smaller. And now if I try to paint it, yep, there you go, it is much smaller. So this works, but this really only scales the sprites, so the grid size is still the same, so I cannot put them right next to each other. So another approach is to make a brand new grid and set the cell size to be smaller. So right click, create a brand new tile map, which creates a new grid as well as new tile map. So let's rename this to the tile map details. And on the grid itself over here, we can modify the cell size. So let's say 0.5. So we have this main grid and then we have this smaller grid. And now in here with this active tile map selected, I can place down these objects right like this. All right, so here's our world map composed of a background, then some objects on top, and then some smaller details. Now, just one last thing regarding tile maps, which is adding colliders. So for example, I want these objects to be fully solid. For that, I'm just going to duplicate this tile map and name this the tile map colliders. And then all we need to do is add the component of the tile map collider. So just do that and yep, it adds colliders to all the objects. So on this one, just erase all of the ones that are not the pillars. So just in here, erase and get rid of all of those. All right, so I erased all the objects except for the pillars. And now the character controller is already testing for collisions. So if I play, so here's my character and I can walk around normally and if I go towards the pillars, nope, can't do it, can't go through them. So that's how simple it is to add collisions onto your tile map. And this also shows how easy it is to use the tile map when making a platformer game. So you could draw the world using the tile map and then just add a tile map collider and all of a sudden you have platform collisions. Alright, so now you know how to use the built-in Unity tile map. It's a very versatile tool that you can use to build massive worlds very easily. And if you want to see how you could make a custom tile map from scratch, go watch that other video. That one is based on the grid class made previously, which is very versatile and you can make it perfectly fit your needs. But for simple cases, the built-in Unity tile map is excellent and very easy to use. Now, like I said, the sprite sheet I'm using here is from the complete visual scripting course that I'm currently working on. One of the games is an action RPG where I will use the tile map in order to build the world. So check the link in the description if you're interested in that course. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.